Now we just got to the cabin. First things first. Just gonna take down the bear proofing. And the plywood. It's just so the snow doesn't blow into the porch. Take down the beer proofing off the window. There we go. Put some light in. And we'll come over here. Turn on the propane. That way, make some coffee. Heats up, heats up the water faster. Just like that. It's a beautiful day here at the cabin. Water's looking nice. Everything's looking super nice. Right on. Should be a good stay at the cabin this weekend. Hopefully it's a good check too. Fingers crossed. Yeah, we got our bear proof and all done. Trying to get a bit of water, coffee, dishes, all the good stuff like that. Don't exactly have running water out here. You get it from down at the old creek. Oh, ice is pretty thick here. So, bust it out. Oh, sweet. Oh, not cool, man. Not cool. Start doing this while I'm filming. <laughs> it was a chore, but I got it. Jeez. <laughs> And just down here getting water. Super nice here. Beautiful weather's really cooperating with us now. It's minus 20 out, so finally get all the animals moving and get some good trapping in before the end of the season here. Still wearing where he sets here. There's nothing here, so we're starting to clean up the line here. Oh, there's some lynx tracks right there. Going right on by. That's kind of cool. Nothing in the box though, so we'll take the trap down and uh, clean it up. We're starting to pull all the traps and take them home here for the end of the season. And It's been a good one though so far, so all good. There's no hard feelings here. At the next site here, got ourselves a squirrel. Pretty nice looking guy. We'll clean this all up and get out of here. A little bait left in the can. We're just cleaning up snares and the rest of this site here. Yeah. We all this, done for the year. The site's been in business for probably 40 years, this spot, to, you know, close to it. In it's caught a lot of fur in the same spot. Yeah, it's just a good place. Good place. Another trap. Just packed up another site here. Just sitting on the edge of the lake, having some lunch. Boys and I, real nice out here. The sun is just giving her. It's about minus 20. Oh, this has been another real good set here yeah. over the years. It's been another good site. Yeah, this spot is. Produced a lot of fur. Yeah, over the years. Right on. A couple of wolverines. I just had a snare pole here. Got a squirrel. 
nice fluffy tail. Uh, real nice looking guy. Get him all tucked away and we'll take the snares off the pole here. Set it up again next season. Boys are just getting dressed. Minus 25 this morning. <clears throat> We're getting ready to head out. Go and check the rest of the line. It's pretty cold. Hopefully the sleds will run good for us and hopefully everything goes smooth this morning. <laughs> Wish us luck. Should be good. Just at a station here of Murray's and what do you got Murray? Red fox in one of the lynx snares. Let's go take a look. Well, oh, he's super nice too. Pretty frozen. <laughs> yeah, That's super nice, Murray. Right on. That's a W for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll get. I caught, I caught every species of fur this winter now. That's cool. <laughs> the last, last part of the puzzle. In the tips. Hmm. So we'll get this site all doctored back up and mosey on. Yeah. That's super cool. It's the first fox I've seen trapped. Nice. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's real nice. Pretty little fox. Right on, Murray. That's really cool. <laughs> Just picking up another trap set here. Trying to get the 280 in frozen. And Murray's coming up the hill here with a 120 and 120 box. Pull it out of there for don't get washed down the creek. <laughs> Leaves them here for next year. Parker's just getting the chain undone on the 280 and we'll yard that out of there and go to the next set. Get that all pulled out. Almost got it all done now. Got a couple of other ones to do, but she is cold today, folks. <laughs> Here's packing up traps, putting them away. We also got over here a double on the squirrel pole. There's two there. And then if we go over here on this trail. Over this log over here. Oh, you got a triple on this one. Sweet. Five squirrels at one site. Those poles sure work good. We'll get these guys all off here and everything all packed away in the sleigh and go to the cabin. We're gonna have some uh, brunch and hang out for a little bit and then we'll mosey home.
we get some potatoes and bacon. And some steaks with it too, some eggs. Ray's just writing in his journal. It's a beautiful day out there. Don't let that fool you though, folks. She is gold. <laughs> I'm just sitting here at the boys, getting ready to have some breakfast, well, brunch, I suppose. And we're just taking down the line. It's kind of bittersweet, but we'll be back next year here. Murray's got some plans for spring beaver and jetting up and down these rivers. And yeah, hopefully the weather and the water cooperates to go out and, and do this stuff. Huh? Usually it's hard to get up in this area because there's so much snow, but... Right at this present moment, I think we only got maybe knee deep of snow and it's usually four or five feet on the ground here at this time of the year. So so the access might be a lot better this coming spring to get up here. You know, you want to be up chasing beaver before the bears start get going or, yeah. you know, they can cause you a lot of strife. Yeah. They'll start stealing your beaver and everything. And, so. and, and the water will be also high enough for the boat to get through. Yeah. Yeah, right now the river's pretty low, it's, you know, in this area, so. Yeah. Springtime, probably be five feet more water in there running. Yep. And there's a few slow spots that you can get on this river, you know, with the freighter canoe and the eight horse motor, and so you just start turning around, looking for old beaver houses and stuff, and yep. find lots of times the springer spring the beaver just moving around and they'll stop in a place and there'll be peeled sticks and everything and that's where you set your traps and use a bit of caster for scent i suppose they'd be moving a lot more too once the ice breaks off too they'd be eager to get out there and yeah and get that's, around and that's the same thing that's when the uh the teenagers get kicked out of the house too sometimes oh, yeah. you know if there's too many and yeah so then so they get kicked out so basically that's a lot of times what you're doing in the springtime is you're just catching transient beaver. They're just out traveling and looking for a place to call their own home. So, you know, you're out there doing it. And, yep. You know, a few years back, you come up in the fall to chase beaver. I brought 20 or 30 traps. I set 20 the first day and then uh, set the other 10 the next morning and then checked them 20 traps on the way back to the truck. The first trap was sprung, the second trap had a muskrat, and the next 18 all had beaver in them. And <laughs> oh. So I had a pretty good boat load by the time yeah. I got to the truck. Yeah. And, so that was pretty fun. I left, I left the trap set for three days and caught 38 beaver out of them 30 traps. So, And they hadn't been trapped, you know, probably seven, eight years. So yeah. it was a pretty good backlog on them. And right on. So now, now l lately, like I... Uh, I was here in 21 was the last time I trapped beaver off the river. And I don't plan to start trapping beaver in the theoretic on the lower section until 24. Yep. And the reason being I do, do it that way is because the beaver are moving around so much, you don't know if, if you're actually taking two out of each house. That's, that's my go-to rule is you try to take two beaver from each house. And you should be able to do that every year if you're doing that. But when the beaver traveling up and down the waterways you know you actually don't know if you're only taking two only taking two yeah. out of one house that's so, right so that's why i give it a three-year you know little layover. break that's right because then you know if that happens the female have young the next year so theoretically if you wait three years the you know the uh, youngest of beaver will be theoretically will be two years old in that house yep you know and so and that's a large beaver Yep. You know, and that's the and that's the other rule of thumb. If you catch a kit in the house, from a house, well, you usually pull your traps and let them be, just so you don't decimate the population. Because usually, what happens, you catch one kit, you'll catch another one. Yep. You know, and sure. so that's that's just the way I do it. You know, lots of people do it different, but for me, that's that's just keeping the population healthy, and and that's the other part too. That's how you know you're going to have a healthy population, and you do your management on it. Harvest so many beaver every year. Yep. Brunch is done. Bacon and potatoes and eggs. Boys are digging in. Yeah. 
Good, good times. We're done, fellas. Yeah, wood's in the cabin. Fear proofing's all on. It was a great time. I mean, one of the last times we come here this winter, but spring will come soon enough. And we'll be out here trapping beavers. And get to the truck now and load up the sleds. And get her going home. It's always bittersweet when we're leaving the cabin.